In this lab, we will create a production-like cluster on Google Cloud Dataproc and get started with Hadoop and Spark programming. You can find the link to our top-rated Udemy course on this subject in the description. Let's now create a cluster using Google Cloud Dataproc, which is the managed Hadoop and Spark service on GCP, or Google Cloud Platform. GCP provides recommendations with quick tutorials on the right panel. We will show you the steps to create a cluster, which are just a few clicks. If you are trying to access any service like Dataproc for the first time, you will be prompted to enable the API. You can do this by following the provided instructions. Copy the link and load the page in a new tab. Then click Enable, and in a few seconds, your Dataproc API will be enabled. After that, you can go back to the main page to continue the cluster creation process. Click Create Cluster. We will select the option to create a cluster on Compute Engine. Select a standard cluster type, one master and n worker nodes. While it's possible to work with a single node cluster, we will be using a three node cluster for most of our labs, one master node and two worker nodes. You will see different tabs to configure and customize the cluster. We will keep everything as default. Note that the free tier has a limit on the total number of CPUs, so you won't be able to create a larger cluster. Keep all values as default and click Create. There is a default setting of internal IP set to true, which we need to change. Without going too much into the networking concept, Let's simply go to the Customize Cluster tab and uncheck the internal IP checkbox. Click Create again. We received some warnings, but the cluster creation is in progress. Let's wait to see if it completes successfully. Now the cluster creation is complete. Click on the link under the cluster name to view details. We see some warnings, which we will ignore for now. Next, navigate to the VM Instances tab, where you will find an SSH option to log in to the master node. Click on it, and you will be directed to the console of the master node. Authorize the SSH access in the browser. From here, you can start interacting with the cluster. This is how you can create a production-grade Big Data Hadoop and Spark cluster using Cloud Dataproc with a few simple clicks. In this lab, we will be working on a Hadoop cluster and saving some files to HDFS. Basic Linux knowledge is required for the lab, but you can follow along and understand without any prior Linux knowledge. We have one master node and two worker nodes in the cluster. Right now, we are logged into the master node through WebSSH. We can use the Linux PWD command, also known as the present working directory command, to know where we are. When we log in, we land in the home directory of the master node. On GCP Dataproc, that directory is home slash your Gmail ID used for signing up to Google Cloud. The ls command lists all the files in the current directory. Currently, there are no files present. Let us pull a file here by executing the wget command. We will download a file from our GitHub repository named futurexskill. You will see many repositories, and most of the files for this course can be found in the Big Data repository. In the Big Data repository, there's a file called retailstore.csv. This file contains information such as age, salary, gender, and country for a set of customers. 
Let's work with this file for now. Although it is a small file, the commands we try will also work for large files in the big data world. Go to the Raw tab and copy the file path. You can copy the file path from here, or click on Raw and copy the file path from the URL. Now we will return to the master node Linux environment. We will execute the wget linux command, specify the path, and pull the file. Now the retailstore.csv file has been copied to the masternode's local environment. Next, let's understand how to move this file from the masternode's local environment to the HDFS file system. The Hadoop fs command is used to interact with the distributed file system from the master node or any of the worker nodes. We can append any command, like the Linux ls command, to get output from the HDFS file system. For example, Hadoop fs ls will list files in the HDFS home directory. By default, GCP Dataproc does not create any directories in HDFS file system. If we execute the Hadoop fs ls user command, we can see Hadoop internal directories such as Hive and HBase under this. We need to create a home directory for our user ID futurexskills46 under this directory. We can prefix make directory with Hadoop fs to create a directory in the Hadoop distributed file system. We will create a directory futurexskills46 under the user directory in HDFS. Now if we run Hadoop fs-ls, we will not get an error since the home directory is present. However, it will display blank as we have not stored any files under this directory. If we run Hadoop fs-ls slash user, we can see the new user directory, futurexskills46. Next, let's try to push the retail store CSV file from the master node's local directory to the newly created HDFS home directory. For this, we will use the Hadoop fs-put command and specify the local file name and the target directory in HDFS. The command got executed successfully. Now, let's execute the ls command to check if files are present. By pressing the up and down arrow, we can get old commands on Dataproc. We can see that Hadoop fs-ls command lists the retail store CSV file in the HDFS home directory. We can also explicitly specify the home directory path in the command to get the same output. Next, let's create a directory called data under our home directory in HDFS. We will execute the Hadoop fs-mkdir command, specifying the complete path Now the data directory is created. Let's push the retail store CSV file from local to the newly created data directory in HDFS. We will execute the Hadoop fs ls commands again to see the files and subdirectories under both home and data directories. We can see the files as expected. Next, let's create another local file, this time simply using the Linux touch command. We will call it readme.txt. This file is present only in the master node local directory.
we will push the file to HDFS using the Hadoop FS put command as before. Let's push it to the default home directory in HDFS and fire an ls command to make sure the file gets copied. Now both readme.txt and retail store CSV files are present in both local as well as HDFS home directory. Note that in HDFS, files are split into multiple blocks and replicated across different nodes, as mentioned earlier. Now let's remove the readme.txt file from the local directory using the Linux rm command. This is deleted from the local, but it should still be present in the HDFS directory. We can copy the file back to the local environment using the Hadoop fs get command. We need to specify the file name and a dot if we are copying to the current directory. Let's execute this command and see if the file got copied. We can see the file in the local directory. Next, let's create a local directory called tempdata. Now let's copy the readme.txt file to this tempdata folder from HDFS. We can see the file under the temp data directory. This is how you can copy a file to any local directory by specifying the exact path as long as you have write access to this directory. Next, let's try to remove a file from HDFS. We will execute the Hadoop fs rm command and specify the file name to remove a specific file from HDFS. Let's remove the readme.txt. The file has been removed from HDFS, but still present in the local directory. This is how we can interact with the Hadoop distributed file system from the master node of a cluster. Note that in the real world, you could be given access to any of the worker nodes to do similar operations. In Dataproc, the SSH option is available only on the master node. Let's now see the practical side of Spark. We log into the Dataproc cluster and then start interacting with data stored in HDFS using Spark. We will create a one master, two worker cluster the way we have done earlier for HDFS and Hive Labs. We have done SSH to the master node First, we will pull the file retail store CSV file from our GitHub repository, the same way we have done in the HDFS and Hive Lab. Then we will create the HDFS home directory, followed by creating a data directory. Then push the file from the master node to HDFS using the Hadoop fs put command. To do Spark programming on Dataproc, you can log into the REPL interface for PySpark or Scala. Let's see the PySpark REPL interface. REPL stands for Read, Evaluate, Print, and Loop. In a REPL interface, you can write a single line of code, execute it, and see the output. You don't need to write the complete program 
to see the output of certain sections. We have now logged into the Python Spark shell using the PySpark command. You can see a message that Spark session is available and also the Spark version being used. As mentioned earlier, Spark session is the entry point to any Spark application. Once you have the Spark session, you can access all libraries and functionalities of Spark. We will now access the files stored in HDFS using Spark. Spark session has a method to read a CSV file. We will call Spark session spark.read.csv. You can specify the file path relative to the home directory in HDFS or provide the complete file path in HDFS. And then to show the content, simply type show. We can see the output here. So we can see that the data is fetched from the CSV file and displayed. We did not specify that the file already had a header, so it considered the header as the first row. Now to specify that the file has a header, we can say read.option header true, and then read the CSV file and display it. Now we can see that it's able to recognize the header and display the data. This is how we can get started with PySpark programming on a dataproc cluster using its PySpark shell. We can also create a hive table on the HDFS data and then read from that hive table using Spark. Let's see how that works. Let's open another window and create a hive table. The steps are similar to what we followed in the Hive Lab. First, we will create a retail cust table that points to the CSV file in HDFS. Then we will read data from that Hive table using a Spark SQL command. Detailed explanations of Spark SQL data frames and Spark functionalities will be covered in subsequent labs. Let's quickly write a few lines of Spark Scala code. To do this, we need to access the Spark shell on the Dataproc cluster and write similar code to fetch the data. Keep in mind that Scala has slightly different syntax compared to Python. We will explore Python and Scala in greater detail in the upcoming labs. This is how you can quickly get started with Hadoop Spark programming on a powerful platform like Google Cloud Dataproc, a scalable big data cluster, within a few minutes. Check out our top-rated Hadoop and Spark course linked in the description to acquire all the essential skills for becoming a real-world data engineer. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more informative content on cloud, data, AI, and generative AI. Hit the bell icon to receive future notifications.